Hello there, Martin here, main instructor from Schildwache Potsdam for Historical European Martial Arts. Today we'll answer the question if you can learn sword fighting, or historical fencing to be more precise, from video games. Of course, there are bad examples to learn sword fighting from, but let's focus on Hellish Quad today, which is probably one of the best examples of fencing in a game so far. I divided my points in theory and practice and will discuss the good and the bad for both of them. We start with fencing theory that we can actually learn quite well. The first thing I noticed is the wide array of attacks one can make in Hellish Quad. There are thrusts, strikes, cuts and even grappling actions. The cuts can come from every direction and can even land with the false edge, so the back edge of the blade, which is awesome. Of course, in reality, any attack could be done at any specific target, which, given gaming controls, isn't necessarily possible nor feasible in a game. But I think that's a minor point. Next, we see a nice display of defenses as well. We notice that we can either parry with the blade or by voiding out of the way with our body. Also, any blows or thrusts can be parried. There is no such thing as an indefensible attack, which is not only good from a gaming perspective, but is realistic as well. Also we learn about the importance of measure and timing. For example, right after a parry with our blade, the opponent is vulnerable, or if we are successfully voiding with the body, we can strike safely during their attack. But for that we need to keep measure. If we go back for example, only the hand will be a viable target, as it's closer to us than their body. If we void sideways, more targets become available, but it's inherently more risky. If we anticipate the strike of our opponent correctly, we can even strike them in a way that hits them while defending us at the same time. A truly historical action in Contra-Tempo. We can punish unnecessary movements, all just by being aware of the range of our opponent and our own. If we get into the multiplayer, we can even play with some psychological concepts as well. Dancing in and out of range, fainting to the one side but striking to another, using complex attacks to break their defense. Hellish Quad even tries to give us reasonable incentives to not just fence like a mad person. One strike or thrust can be enough to end your virtual life, a feature not often found in games, as it's quite punishing for sure. But we have to remember that fencing is first and foremost the art of self-defense, so this is probably as good as it gets for a video game. So what is the bad on the theory side of things? Well, even if Hellish Quad tries to emulate it to a certain degree, Really controlling the opponent's action with your own position by constraining the blade is not really feasible. Oh, maybe I haven't figured it out. But a blade bind is a lot more than just sticking one's blade out and beating the opponents away. There are very fine motor skills at work that can change the dynamic of a bind completely. You might know about leverage. Towards the tip of the blade lies a debole, the weak of the blade, because there you get a huge lever to control the hand attached to that sword. While down at the cross, you are strong due to having almost no leverage. But small changes in the blade angulation, being on top, aligning oneself behind one's blade, using the flexibility of the opponent's flat of the blade. These are finer details that a game cannot convey. And that brings me to economy of motion. A lot of attacks just seem clunky, like in a lot of video games to be honest. That is of course necessary, because you will need time to react like in a real sword fight, but on top the game needs time to process your input. So any defense will inherently be slower. To balance, the attacks need to be slower as well. But this leads to really wonky body mechanics. So please do not try to emulate these movements. In a sword fight, you want your movements and attacks as direct as possible, while still being powerful or fast enough to make that parry or attack count. 
And that brings me to the practical aspects of fencing or fighting with a sword. What is good? Well, you might argue that you will learn to react to your visual input to move your hands. It's just that this motion is so vastly different to what you would do with a sword in hand that it's mostly a waste of time. This is also why I usually don't do reaction drills in training where there's a beep, command or anything. I've seen rock, paper, scissors you'd need to react to. It's just too different for your brain to help you learn actual fencing. You just learn to react to that specific input or you just learn that specific motion, like clicking a key. It might still be fun, of course, so just know the limits. And that's exactly the reason why you will not become a master of swordplay by just playing video games or watching videos. You will need to put in the time and the effort to train these motions and reactions into your body. You will need to learn to recognize your opponent's motions while you are moving. Do you remember when you learned to drive a car? At the beginning I needed to focus so much on the mechanics, shifting gears etc. that I found it really hard to also pay attention to passengers, other cars and traffic signs. It's just too much. But with practice, these motions become automatic and you can focus on actually paying attention to your surroundings. Fencing with a sword is similar. You'll need to constantly train your body to adapt to your opponent while being able to follow your own plan of action as well. Maybe VR might be of help in the future to recognize measure and timing in a similar enough way. But still, I see no way to have any meaningful feedback in your hands when you hit the opponent's blade or their body. Feeling is an important part of swordplay. A controller is not a sword after all, even though I've seen one attached to the grip of a home trainer. So in conclusion, you might learn a lot about the art of fencing, but almost nothing about the practice. And as it's written in the MS3227A, out of the Lichtenau tradition, also know and note that one cannot really talk about fencing in a meaningful manner or explain it with written words, as some might like. You can only show it and instruct it by hand. So use all of your senses and pay close attention to the art and practice it more for fun and play so it will be ready for you quickly for fencing seriously. That is because practice is better than art. Your practice may very well be useful without art, but your art is useless without practice. Can you learn fencing on your own? Yes. Quite a few people are self-taught, but this is hard. You will make many mistakes without knowing them. You can save a lot of time by getting an instructor and profiting from the progress they already made. If there is no club, get a friend to train with you and reach out. There are lots of online programs out there by now. You can ask me if you want to take Bolognese fencing lessons or have a look at the Chicago Swordplay Guild St. Louis School of Arms, Duello TV or Marazzo.com. There are lots of options. But always opt for a local club if there is one. Connect with people. HEMA is a social hobby. If you enjoyed this kind of video, make sure to leave a like and share it with a friend. Until next time, ciao!